Let me ask you about the about the high short interest in the stock in light of what's been going on in the market. Uh, as I understand it, you've got about 40 percent of the shares uh, are are being shorted. Uh, is that of concern to you or, 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 or do you just play past it? How do you how do you how do you handle something like that? Yeah, so we have about 46 percent of our float that's uh, short right now. And, uh, you know, we're really focused on building a great business and on delivering on our mission to our customers, uh, which is to get them back on the road. And, um, you know, the short thesis on our stock is that, you know, we're a COVID play and that once COVID is over, you know, people will go back to shopping the way that they used to. Um, however, we haven't really seen a slowdown in our business. If you think about our Q3 uh, results, we grew 70%. And we grew three to five times faster than our closest competitors. And so we'll continue building a great business and focusing on solving a customer problem. And, you know, the short interest will, will work itself out. Sure. At the same time, though, um, there is this rise in your stock, Levin. So I'm, I'm curious as to how you are thinking about additional capital raises. I know you gave it a, an interview recently and you said that you would be open to it, that that would be your obligation to shareholders. Are you poised to do so? Do you have a registration with the SEC? It looks like the last registration you had was back in August when you, all, when you did a capital raise. So it looked like it was associated with that capital raise back then. Correct. So we do have a shelf. Uh, uh, so we filed a shelf last year for $250 million and then... Uh, we raised 65 million. We don't have a, an immediate need for uh, for capital today, but you know, as valuations change, I think for some companies it's kind of uh, a way to make something a reality. You know, if you look at a company like Tesla, you know, they kept raising money at higher and higher valuations, and that allowed them to grow into the valuation that they received. So we would definitely be open to doing a raise depending on the valuation, uh, but you know, we we want to be very very targeted and very specific about at what price we dilute our shareholders. Um, and so depending on the valuation, that's that's kind of how we think about the capital raise. The company is performing well right now, Lev. Uh, in the last week or so, you introduced a, a special sort of part of your website that will sell car parts for electronic vehicles or electric vehicles. I keep saying electronic. Uh, electric vehicles. Um, how is that going? And over time, what percentage of your revenue do you expect those parts to be uh, compared with car parts for uh, conventional um, fossil fuel vehicles? Yeah, so a common myth is that, you know, electric vehicles and, and combustion engine vehicles have, have different parts. You know, 93 percent of parts are actually pretty similar. Uh, you look at bumper covers and fenders and door handles and headlights and taillights. Like all of those parts are the same, whether it's a combustion engine or an electric vehicle or a hybrid vehicle. And hybrids actually have even more parts mm -hmm. than a traditional vehicle because they have both an electric component as well as as an as a fuel powered component. So those cars have even more parts than than a traditional vehicle. If you think about where GM is going, so 2035, um, all new cars sold by GM will be electric. California announced something similar where you know by 2035 all cars will be electric that are sold in the state. You know, our sweet spot is a six to 12 year old vehicle, but we believe in making the investments today to start building a destination for consumers and to continue delivering on our mission of getting drivers back on the road, regardless of what vehicle they own and what vehicle they drive. Um, you know, and I think our uh, percentage of revenue will kind of follow the penetration of electric vehicles and hybrids into the overall mm -hmm. car park. So, as those cars get, you know, penetrated more and more, we'll see more and more sales coming from those vehicles. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.